and then they dream of another benefice. Sometimes she driveth o'er a soldier's neck, and then he dreams of cutting foreign throats, of breaches and buscottos, Spanish blades, of health, five fathom deep, and then another strikes in his ears and he starts and looks. Ah! And being thus frightened, says a prayer or two, he sleepeth again. Oh, this is the very mad that plats the manes of horses in the night and bakes the elk locks in foul, sluttish hair. <laughs> Once untangled, <laughs> much misfortune bodes. <laughs> <laughs> Now this is the hag. Now when maidens lie on their backs, that presses them, and learns them first to bear, making them women of good carriage. This is she! Peace! Peace, Mercutio, peace. Thou talkst of nothing. It's true, I talk of dreams. <laughs> Which are the children of an idle brain, begot of nothing but vain fantasy, which is as thin a substance as the air, and more inconstant than the wind. Ah, this wind you talk of blows us from ourselves. Supper is done, and we shall come too late. I fear too early, for my mind is this. Some consequence yet hanging in the stars shall bitterly begin his fearful date with this night's revels, and expire the term of a despised life closed in my breast by some vile forfeit of untimely death. But he that hath the stirrage of my course, direct my suit on, lusty gentlemen. Strike drum. Welcome. Welcome, gentlemen. Ladies that have their toes unplagued with corns will walk about with you. Ah, my mistresses, which of you all will now deny to dance? She that makes dainty, she I'll swear had corns. Oh, am I come near ye now? Welcome, gentlemen. I have seen the day that I have worn a visor and could tell a whispering tale in a fair lady's ear such as would please. Oh, tis gone, tis gone, tis gone. You are welcome, gentlemen. Come, musicians, play. Oh, oh, give room and foot it goes! <laughs> Never 
saw true beauty till this night. This by his voice should be a mount to you. Fetch me my rapier, boy. What dares the slave come hither covered with an antique face to flare and scorn at our solemnity? Now, by the stock and honor of our kin, to strike him dead, I hold it not a sin. Why, how now, kinsman? Wherefore storm you so? Uncle, to the mount of you, our foe, a villain that is hither come in spite to scorn at our solemnity this night. Young Romeo, is it? Tis he, that villain Romeo. Content thee, gentle cousin, let him alone. I'll bear him like a portly gentleman. And truth to say, Verona brags of him to be a virtuous and well-governed youth. I would not, for the wealth of all the town, here in my house, do him disparagement. Therefore be patient. Take no note of him. Show a fair presence and put off these frowns, and he'll be seeming semblance for a feast. It fits when such a villain is a guest. I'll not endure him. He shall be endured. What good man, boy? Go to him. I the mace the hero you go to you. You'll not endure him. God shall mend my soul. You make a mutiny among the guests. You will set talk a hoop. You'll be the man. My uncle. Tis a shame! Go to, go to, you are a saucy boy. Yes, so indeed. Well said, my heart. You are a princox. Go. Patience for force. With willful call and meeting makes my flesh tremble in their different greeting. I will withdraw, but this intrusion shall now seeming sweet convert to bitter gall. If I profane with my unworthiest hand this holy shrine, the gentle sin is this. My lips, two blushing pilgrims, did ready stand to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss.
this name I conjure only but to raise up him. <laughs> he hath hid himself among these trees to be consorted with the humorous knife. <laughs> Blind is his love and best befits the dark. Well, let's not be blind. Love cannot hit the mark. <laughs> now will he sit under a medlar tree and wish his mistress were that kind of fruit, <laughs> as maidens call medlars when they laugh alone. <laughs> oh, Romeo, that she were! Oh, that she were an open! Is that a poppin' pain? <laughs> Neither, fair maid, if either thee dislike. How camest thou hither? 
tell me, and wherefore? The orchard walls are high and hard to climb, and, and this place dead considering who thou art. If any of my kinsmen find thee here. It was like wings that I will perch these walls, for stony limits cannot hold love out. And what love can do, that there's love attempt, therefore thy kinsmen are no stop to me. If they do see thee, they will murder thee. Alack, there lies more peril in thine eye than twenty of their swords. I would not for the world they saw thee here. I have knights cloak to hide me from their eyes. And but thou love me, let them find me here. My life is better ended by their hate than death, prorogued wanting of thy love. By whose direction foundst thou out this place? By love. The first had taught me to inquire. He lent me counsel, and I lent him eyes. I am no pilot. But were thou as far as that vast shore watched with the farthest sea, I should adventure for such merchandise. Thou knowest the mask of night is on my face, else would a maiden blush be paint my cheek for that which thou hast heard me speak tonight. Fain would I dwell on form, fain, fain. Deny what I have spoke, but farewell compliment. Doest thou love? I know thou wilt say I, and I will take thy word. Yet, if thou swearest, thou mayest prove false. As lovers perjury, they say Jove laugh. O gentle Romeo, if thou dost love, pronounce it faithfully. Or if thou thinkest I am too quickly won, I'll frown, and, and be perverse, and say thee nay, so thou wilt woo. But else not for the world. In truth, fair Montague, I am too fond, and therefore thou mayest think my behavior light. But trust me, gentlemen, I will prove more true than those that have coying to be strange. That I should have been more strange, I must confess. But that thou overheardst ere I was where my true love's passion. Therefore, pardon me, and not impute this yielding to light's love, which the dark night hath so discovered. Lady, by yonder moon I vow that tips with silver all these fruit tree tops. Thou swear not by the moon, the inconstant moon, that monthly changes in our circled orb, lest thy love prove likewise variable. What shall I swear by? Well, do not swear at all. For if thou wilt, swear by thy gracious self, which is the god of my idolatry, and I'll believe thee. If my heart's dear, love. Swear. Do not swear. Although I joy in thee, I have no joy in this contract tonight. It's too rash, too unadvised, too sudden, too like the lightning that don't cease to be, ere one can say it lightens. Sweet good night, this bud of love by summer's ripening breath may prove a beauteous flower when next we meet. Good night, good night, as sweet repose and rest come to thy heart as that within my breast. Oh, thou leave me so unsatisfied? What satisfaction canst thou have tonight? Uh, the exchange of thy love's faithful vow for mine. I gave thee mine before thou didst request it, and yet I would it were to give again. Would thou withdraw it for what purpose, love? Oh, but to be frank and give it thee again. And yet I wish but for the thing I have. My bounty is as boundless as the sea, my love as deep. The more I give to thee, the more I for both are infinite. Uh, I hear some noise within, dear love, adieu. Uh, uh, no, I'm good nurse. Sweet mountain, you be true. Stay but a little. I will come again. Oh, oh, blessed, blessed night. I am a feared being in night. All this is but a dream, too flattering sweet to be substantial. Three words, dear Romeo. And good night indeed. If that thy bent of love be honorable, thy purpose marriage, send me word tomorrow by one that I'll procure to come to thee, where and what time that will perform the right. And all my fortunes at thy foot I'll lay, and follow thee, my lord, throughout the world. Madam! I come and on, but if thou meanest not well, I do beseech thee. Madam! By and by I come to seek the strife and leave me to my grief. Tomorrow will I send. So thrive my soul. A thousand times the worst to want thy light. Love goes towards love 
and schoolboys from their books, but love from love towards school with heavy looks. Kiss, Romeo, kiss. Oh, my niece. What o'clock tomorrow shall I send to thee? Uh, by the hour of nine. I will not fail. Tis twenty years till then. I have forgot why I did call thee back again. Uh, let me stand here till thou remember it. I will forget to have thee still stand there, remembering how I love thy company. And I'll still stay to have thee still forget forgetting any other home but this. It is almost morning. I would have thee gone. No farther than a wanton bird that that to pop a little from its hand, like a poor prisoner in its twisted jive, and with a silken thread plucks it back again, so loving, jealous of his liberty. I would I were thy bird. Oh, sweet, so would I. And yet I would kill thee with much cherishing. Good night, good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night till it be morrow. Sleep dwell upon thine eyes, peace in thy breast. Would I were sleep and peace so sweet to rest. The gray-eyed morn smiles on the frowning night, checkering the eastern clouds with streaks of light, and darkness freckled like a drunkard reels from four days' pathways made by titans. Wheels, hence will I to my ghostly fires, close cell is help to crave, and my dear hat to tell. Now ere the sun advance his burning eye, the day to cheer and night's dank dew to dry. I must upfill this osher cage of ours with baleful weeds and precious juiced flowers. O oh, mickle is the powerful grace that lies in plants, herbs, stones, and their true qualities. For not so vile that on earth doth live, but to the earth some special good doth give. Nor up so good, but strained from that fair use, revolts from true birth, stumbling on abuse. <coughs> Virtue itself turns vice, being misapplied, and vice, sometime by action dignified. Within the infant rind of this weak flower, poison hath residence and medicine power. <laughs> For this being smelt with that part, <laughs> Cheers each part, who being tasted stays all senses with the heart. To such opposed kings encamp them still in man as well as herbs, grace and rude will. And where the worser is predominant, full soon the canker death beats up that plant. Good morning, Father. Benedicte! <laughs> what early tongue so sweet saluteth me? Young son? It argues a distempered head, so soon to be good morrow to thy bed. Therefore thy earliness doth me assure, thou art aroused with some distemperature. Or if not so, then here I hit it right, our Romeo hath not been in bed tonight. The last is true, the sweeter rest was mine. God pardon sin, was thou with Rosaline? Rosaline, my ghostly father, no, I have forgot that name, and that name's woe. Be plain, good son, rest homely in thy drift, riddling confession finds but riddling thrift. Then plainly know, my heart's dear love is set on the fair daughter of rich Capulet. Thy hand on her, so hers is set on mine, and all combined, save what thou must combine by holy marriage, where and when and how we met, we wooed and made exchange of vow, I'll tell thee as we can, but this I pray, that thou consent to marry us today. Holy Saint Francis, what a change is here! Is Rosaline that thou didst love so dear, so soon forsaken? Young men's love then lies not truly in their hearts, but in 
is my pump well for ah! So wit, follow me this jest. Now to thou hast worn out thy pump. After the single soul that is worn, well the jest remains after the wearing. Ooh, the soul singular. Oh, a single soul jest, solely singular for the singleness. Mm -hmm. Come between us, good Benvolio. <laughs> my wit fails. Stop there, stop there. Oh, here's goodly gear. A sail, a sail. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Lord's to Romeo. Concert? What dost thou make us minstrels? Huh. Thou make us minstrels work to hear nothing but discords. Here's my fiddle stick. Here's what shall make you dance. Come! Consort! We talk here in the public haunt of men. Either withdrawn to some private place, or a reason coldly of your grievances, or else depart. Here all eyes gaze on us. Men's eyes were made to look. And let them gaze! I will not budge for no man's pleasure, I. Well, peace be with you, sir. Here comes my man. Well, I'll be hanged, sir, if he wear your livery. Nay, go before the field. He'll be your follower. Your worship, in that sense, may call him man. Romeo? The love I bear thee can afford no better term than this. Thou art a villain. Tybalt, the reason that I have to love thee doth much excuse the appertaining rage to such a greeting, though that I am none. Therefore, farewell, I see thou knowest me not. Why? This shall not excuse the injury that thou hast done me. Therefore, turn and drive and protest. I never injured thee, but love thee better than thou canst devise. Till thou shalt know the reason of my love. And so good Capulet, whose name I tender as dearly as mine own, be satisfied. Oh, come, dishonorable, vile submission. Alice the Catho carries it away. Timult, you rat catcher, will you walk? What wouldst thou have with me? A good king of cats. Nothing but one of your nine lives that I mean to make bold withal. And as you shall use me hereafter, dry beat the rest of the ape. Will you pluck your sword out of his pilcher by the ears? Make haste. Least mine be about your ears, ere it be out. I am for you. Gentle Mercutio, put thy rapier up. Come, sir. Your passado.
citizens are up and people slain. Stand not amazed, the prince will doom thee death if thou art taken hence be gone away. Oh, I am fortune fool and if thou stay. Which way ran he that killed Mercutio? Tell up that murderer, which way ran he? There lies that tibble. Up, sir, go with me. I charge thee, the prince is made no bad. Where the fire begins of this prey? I can discover cousin. all. Oh, my brother's child! Oh, the unlucky marriage oh, of this fatal ball. Oh, the blood is filled with my dear kinsmen. Sing by young Romeo.
holding my hand. Oh, Anna Dare, he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. We are undone, baby. We are undone. Oh, that's the day he's gone. He's killed. He's dead. Can heaven be so empty? Oh, Romeo, can. Though heaven cannot. Oh, Romeo. Romeo. Oh, whoever would have thought it, Romeo. What did I thought it does torment me? Yes. I saw the wound. I saw it in my eyes. Father and my mother nurse, weeping and wailing over Tibble. 
Lizzie. Yeah, does that think we shall ever meet again? I doubt it not. And all these woes shall serve as sweet discourses in our time to come. Oh, God. You have an old divining soul. Methinks I see thee now. Thou art so low as one dead in the bottom of a tomb. Either my eyesight fails, or thou lookst pale. Don't trust me, love, in my eyes, so do you. Dry sorrow drinks our blood. Adieu. Adieu. Oh, fortune. Fortune. All men call thee fickle. If thou art fickle, what dost thou with him as renowned for faith? Be fickle, Fortune, for then I hope thou wilt not keep him long, but send him back. Who, oh, daughter? Oh. Are you up? Uh. Madam, I am not well. Oh, evermore weeping for your cousin's death? What, wilt thou wash him from his grave with tears? And if thou couldst, thou couldst not make him live, therefore have done. Some of grief shows much of love, but much of grief shows still some want of wit. Yet let me weep for such a feeling lost. Well, girl, weep not so much for his death as that the villain lives which slaughtered him. What villain, madam? That same villain, Romeo. Oh, a villain, and he be many miles asunder. God pardon, I do with all my heart, yet... No man like he doth grieve my heart. That is because the traitor lives. Ay, madam, from these the reach my hands. Would none but I might venge my cousin's death. We will have vengeance for it, fear thou not. Then weep no more. I'll send to one in Mantua where that same banished runagate doth live. Shall give him such an unaccustomed drum that he shall soon keep Tybalt's company. And then I hope thou wilt be satisfied. Indeed, I never shall be satisfied with Romeo till I behold him. Death is my poor heart for so a kinsman vexed. Madam, if you could find out but a man to bear a poison, I would temper it. That Romeo should upon receipt thereof soon sleep in quiet. Oh, how my heart abhors to hear him named and cannot come to him. Curse! 
out on her, Hilding. Oh, God in heaven, bless her, sir. You are to blame, my lord. Oh, Pete, the blame fool. Out of your gravity or our gossip, Spolfa. Here we need it not. You are too hot. John's bread makes me mad. Day, night, hour, time, ride, work, play, alone in company. Still, my care hath been to have her matched. And having now provided a gentleman of noble parentage, stuffed, as they say, with honorable parts, proportioned as one's thoughts would wish a man, and then to have a wretched, puling fool, a whining nanner, in her fortunes tender, to answer, I'll not win. I cannot love. I am too young. I pray you pardon me. But and you'll not win. I'll pardon you. Graze where you will. You shall not house with me. Look to it. Think on it. I do not use the jest. Thursday is near, lay hand on heart, advise, and you be mine, I'll give you to my friend, and you be not, hang, beg, starve, die in the streets, for by my soul, I'll never acknowledge thee, no what is mine shall never do thee good, trust to it, bethink you, I'll not be forsworn. Oh, sweet, my mother, cast me not away, delay this marriage for a, a month, a week, or if you do not, Make the bridal bed in that same dim monument where Tybalt lies. Talk not to me, for I'll not speak a word. Do as thou wilt, for I have done with thee. Oh, God. Oh, nurse, how shall this be prevented? Comfort me, counsel me. Ask thou not a word of joy. Some comfort, nurse. Hey, here it is. <laughs> Romeo is banished, and all the world to nothing that he dares come back to challenge you. That since the case so stands as now, it doth I think it best you married with the county. I think you are happy in this second match, for it excels your first. <laughs> or if it did not. Then your first is dead, or twere as good he were as living here, and you know use of him. Speakest thou from thy heart? Aye, and from my soul too, else for shoot them both. Amen. What? Well, Thou hast comforted me marvelous much. Go in and tell my lady I am gone, having displeased my father to Lawrence Cell, to make confession and to be absolved. Oh, Mary, I will, and this is wisely done. Oh. Ancient damnation. Almost wicked fiend. It is of more sin to wish me thus forsworn, or with that same tongue to dispraise my lord, whom she has praised above compare so many thousand times? Go, counselor. Thou and my bosom henceforth shall be twain. I'll to the friar to know his remedy. If all else fail, myself have power to die. On Thursday, sir? The time is very short. My father Capulet will have it so, and I am nothing slow to slack his haste. You say you do not know the lady's mind? Uneven is the course. I like it not. Immoderately she weeps for Tybalt's death, and therefore I have little talk of love, for Venus smiles not in a house of tears. Now, sir, her father counts it dangerous that she doth give her sorrow so much sway, and in his wisdom hastes our marriage to stop the inundation of her tears. Now do you know the reason for this haste? I would I knew not why I should be slowed. Well, look, sir, here comes the lady towards myself. Happily met my lady and my wife. That may be, sir, when I may be a wife. That may be must be love on Thursday next. What must be shall be. That's a certain text. Come you to make confession to this father. To answer that, I should confess to you. Do not deny to him that you love me. I will confess to you that I love him. So will ye, I am sure that you love me. If I do, sir, it will be of more price being spoke behind your back than to your face. Poor soul, thy face is much abused with tears. The tears have got small victory by that. It was bad enough before their spite. Thou wrongst it more than tears with that report. That is no slander, sir, which is a truth. And what I spake, I spake to thy face. Thy face is mine, and thou hast slandered it. It may be so, for it is not mine own. Are you at leisure, Holy Father, now, or 
shall I come to you at evening mass? My leisure serves me pensive, daughter, now. My lord, you must entreat to the time alone. God shield, I should disturb devotion. Juliet, on Thursday early I will rouse thee. Until then, adieu. And keep this holy kiss. Come weep with me. Past hope, past care, past help. Oh, Juliet, I already know thy grief. Tell me not, Father, thou hearest of this, unless thou tell me how I may prevent it. If in thy wisdom thou canst give no help, do thou but call my resolution wise. And with this knife, I'll help it presently. Give me some present counsel. Be not so long to speak. I long to die if what thou speaks speaks not of remedy. Hold, daughter. I do spy a kind of hope that copes with death himself to escape from it. And if thou darest, I'll give thee remedy. Oh, bid me leap rather than marry Paris from over the battlements of any tower. And I will do so without fear or doubt to live an unsated wife to my sweet love. Hold then, go home, be merry, give consent to marry Paris. Wednesday is tomorrow, tomorrow night, look that thou lie alone. Let not thy nurse lie with thee in thy chamber. Take thou this vial, being then in bed, and this distilling liquor drink thou off, when presently through all thy veins shall run a cold and drowsy humor, for no pulse shall keep his native progress, but surcease. No warmth, no breath shall testify thou livest. The roses in thy lips and cheeks shall fade, and in this borrowed likeness of shrunk death thou shalt continue two and forty hours, and then awake as from a pleasant sleep. Thou shalt be born to that same ancient vault where all the kindred of the Capulets lie. In the meantime, against thou shalt awake, shall Romeo by my letters know our drift, and hither shall he come, and that very night shall Romeo bear thee hence to Mantua. <laughs> and this shall free thee from this present shame, if no inconstant toy nor womanish fear abate thy valor in the acting it. Oh, give me, give me, tell me not of care. Hold, get you gone, be strong and prosperous in this resolve. I'll send the friar with speed to Mantua with my letters to thy lord. Love give me strength, and this strength shall help afford. Farewell, dear father. Many guests invite us here, Arfred. Uh, Saran. Go hire me twenty cunning cooks. You shall have none ill, sir, for I'll try if they can lick their fingers. <laughs> <clears throat> How canst thou try them, sir? Marry, sir, tis an ill cook that cannot lick his own fingers. Therefore, he that cannot lick his fingers goes not with me. <laughs> Go, be gone. We shall be much on furnace for this time. What is my daughter going to fry like? Uh, I, forsooth. <laughs> but he may chance to do some good on her, a peevish self wild harlotry of his. See where she comes from, shift with no merry look. Oh, now my head's strong. Where have you been getting? Where I have learnt me to repent the sin of disobedient opposition to you and your behests, and am enjoined now by holy Lawrence to fall prostrate and beg your pardon. Pardon, I beseech you. Henceforth, I am e'er ruled by you. Send for the county. Go, tell him of this. I'll have this not knit up tomorrow morning. Why, I am glad on it. This is well. Stand up. Now, afore God, this reverend holy friar, all our whole city is much bound to him. Nurse. Will you go with me into my closet to help me sort such needful ornaments as you think fit to furnish me tomorrow? And no, not till Thursday. There's time enough. Uh, go, nurse. Go with her. We'll to church tomorrow. We shall be short in our provision. Tis now near night. Go to Juliet. Help to deck up her. I'll not to bed tonight. I will walk myself to County Paris to help prepare him up against tomorrow. Oh, my heart is wondrous light since this same wayward girl is so reclaimed. Aye, those attires are best, but I pray you, gentle nurse, leave me to myself tonight, for I have need of many orisons to move the heavens to smile upon my state, which, well thou knowest, is cross and full of sin. What, are you busy, ho? Need you my help? Oh, no, madam. Uh, 
we have called such necessaries as are behooful for our state tomorrow. <laughs> so please you let me now be left alone. And let the nurse this night sit up with you. For I am sure you have your hands full all in this so sudden business. Night, get thee to bed and rest, for thou hast need. <laughs> Sweetheart! 
Sauron, the county Paris, hath uh, set up his rest, that you shall rest but little. <laughs> God forgive me. Mary and amen. How sound is she asleep? I must needs wake her. Madam. 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 <laughs> I let the county take you in your bed. Uh, he'll fright you up if faith will not be. What? Dressed? <laughs> and in your clothes? And down again? Lady. Lady. I must needs wake you, lady. Lady. Lady, he... Alas! 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 My lady's dead! Oh, well a day that ever I was born. Oh, oh, Samaku Vite! Oh, oh, my lord! My lady! What noise is here? Breathe 
such life with kisses in my lips that I revived and was an emperor. Ah me, how sweet is love itself possessed that but love's shadows are so rich in joy. News from Verona. How now, Balthazar? Dost thou not bring me letters from the friar? How with my lady is my father well? How doth my lady Juliet? That will I ask again, for nothing can be ill if she be well. And she is well, and nothing can be ill. Her body sleeps in Capel's monument, and her immortal part with angels live. I saw her laid low in her kindred's vault, and presently took post to tell it you. Oh, pardon me for bringing these ill news, since you did leave it for my office, sir. Is it even so? Then I deny you, stars! Thou knowest my lodging, get me ink and paper, and hire post horses. I will hence tonight. I do beseech you, sir, have patience. Your looks are pale and wild, and do import some misadventure. Hush! Thou art deceived. Leave me and do the thing I bid thee do. Hast thou no letters for me from the friar? No, my good lord. No matter, get thee gone. And hire those horses I will hence tonight. Well, Juliet, I will lie with thee tonight. Let's see for means. Oh, oh, mischief! Thou art swift to enter in the thoughts of desperate men. I do remember an apothecary. And if a man should need a poison now, whose sale is present death in Mantua, here lives a caitiff wretch which selleth him. As I remember, this should be the house. Being holy day, the beggar's shop is shut. What ho! Apothecary! Who calls so loud? Come hither, man. I see that thou art poor. Hold. Here is forty ducats. Let me have a dram of poison. Such soon speeding gear as would disperse itself through all the veins that the life-weary taker may fall dead. Such mortal drugs I have. But Mantua's law is death to any he that touches them. Art thou so bare and full of wretchedness? and fears to die. Famine is in thy cheeks, contempt and beggary hangs upon thy back. The world is not thy friend, nor the world's law. The world affords no law to make thee rich. Then be not poor, but break it and take this. My poverty, but not my will can set. I pray thy poverty and not thy will. Put this any liquid thing you will, and drink it off. If you had the strength of twenty men, it would dispatch you straight. There's thy gold. Farewell, buy food, and get thyself in flesh. Come, cordial, and not poison. Go with me to Juliet's grave, for there must I use thee. Holy Francis and Friar? Mother? Oh! This same should be the voice of Friar John, welcome from Mantua. What says Romeo, or if his mind be writ, give me his letter. Going to find a barefoot brother out, one of our order to associate me. Here in this city, visiting the sick, and finding him, the searchers of the town, suspecting that we both were in a house where the infectious pestilence did reign, sealed up the doors, and would not let us forth, so that my speed to Mantua there was stayed. Who bear my letter then to Romeo? I could not send it. Here it is again, nor get a messenger to bring it to thee, so fearful were they of infection. Unhappy fortune, by my brotherhood the letter was not nice, but full of charge, of dear import, and the neglecting it may do much danger. Friar John, go hence, get me an iron crow, and bring it straight unto myself. Brother, I'll go and bring it thee. Now must I to the monument alone. Within this three hours will fair Juliet wake. She will beshrew me much that Romeo hath had no notice of these accidents. But I will write again to Mantua, and keep her at my cell till Romeo come. Poor living corse, closed in a dead man's tomb. Give me thy torch, boy. Hence and stand aloft. Give me those flowers. Do as I bid thee go. Sweet flower with flowers, thy bridal bed I strew. Oh, woe, thy canopy is as dust and stones, which with sweet water nightly I will do, or wanting not tears to steal.
filled by moans. The obsequies that I for thee will keep nightly will be to strew thy grave and weep. The boy gets warned. Something doth approach. What cursed foot wanders this way tonight to cross my obsequies in true love's right? What? With a torch? Muffle me a night awhile. Take this letter early in the morning. See that thou deliver it to my lord and father. Give me thy light. Upon thy life I charge thee. Whate'er thou hearest or seest, stand all aloof and do not interrupt me in my course. But if thou jealous, dost return to pry and what I further shall intend to do. By heaven, I will tear thee joint by joint and screw this hungry churchyard with thy limbs. I will be gone, sir, and not trouble you. So wilt thou show me friendship? Take thou that. Love and be prosperous. Farewell, good fellow. For all this same, I'll hide me hereabout. His looks I fear, and his intents I doubt. Thou detestable maw, thou womb of death, gorged with the dearest morsel of the earth. Hence! Do I enforce thy rotten jaws to open? Ugh. And in despite, I'll cram thee with more food. This is that banished haughty Montague that murdered my love's cousin, with which grief it is supposed the fair creature died. And here has come to do some villainous shame to the dead bodies. I will apprehend you. Stop thy unhallowed toil, vile Montague. You can vengeance be pursued further than death. Condemned villain, I do apprehend thee. Obey and go with me, for thou must die. Indeed I must, and therefore came I hither. Good gentle youth, tempt not a desperate man. Put not another sin upon my head by urging me to fury. Oh, be gone. By heaven I love thee better than myself, for I came hither armed against myself. Stay not. Be gone, live, and hereafter say a madman's mercy bid thee run away. I defy thy commiseration and apprehend thee for a felon here. Will that provoke me? Then have at thee, boy. Oh, Lord, they fight. I will come to watch. Uh. 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 Uh.
the point of death have they been merry that the keepers call a lightning before death oh how may I call this a lightning oh my love my wife death that had sucked the honey of thy breath had had no power yet upon thy beauty thou art not conquered beauty's ensign yet is crimson in thy lips and in thy cheek and death's pale flag is not advanced there ah dear Juliet why art thou yet so fair I shall believe shall I believe that unsubstantial death is amorous and that the lean abhorrent monster keeps thee here in dark to be his paramour for fear of that, I will still stay with thee. And never from this palace of dim night depart again. Come, lie thou in my arms. For the watch is coming. 
Come, go, good Juliet. I dare no longer stay. Don't give me hands, for I will not away. <laughs> What's here? A cat. Uh, poison, I see, hath been his timeless end. Drop to help me after? I will kiss thy lips. <coughs> Happily some poison still doth hang on them to make me die with a restorative. Her lips are warm. What? Which way? Oh, yay, noise. Th th then I'll be brief. Churchyard! Go, some of you, whoever you find, attach! Pitiful sight. Here lies the county slain. And Juliet, bleeding. Warm and new killed. With late hair these two days buried. Go, tell the prince, run to the Capulet. Rise up the Montagues. Some other search. We see the ground whereon these lows do lie. But the true ground of these piteous woes we cannot without circumstance descry. Here's Romeo's man. We found him in the churchyard. Hold him in safety till the prince come hither. Here is a friar that trembles, sighs, and weeps. We took this mattock and iron from him as he was coming from this churchyard side. Great suspicion. Stay the friar, too. What misadventure is so early up that calls our person from our morning's rest? What should it be that they so strike abroad? Oh, the people in the streets cry Romeo. Some Juliet and some Paris, and all run with open outcry toward our monument. What fear is this which startles in your ears? Uh, sovereign, here lies the county Paris slain, and Romeo dead, and Juliet dead before, warm and new killed. <sighs> Search, seek, and know how this foul murder comes. Here is a friar, and slaughtered Romeo's man, with instruments upon them fit to open these dead men's tombs. Oh, heaven! <laughs> oh, wife, look how our daughter bleeds! Oh, me! This sight of death is as a bell that warns my old age to his sepulchre. Come, Montague, for thou art early up to see thy son in air now early down. Alas, my liege, my wife is dead tonight. Grief of my oh. son's exile has stopped her breath. What further woe conspires oh. against mm. my age? Look, and thou shalt oh. see. Oh, thou untaught, what manners is in this? To press before thy father to a grave. Oh, seal up the mouth of Aldrich for a while till we clear these ambiguities. Bring forth the parties of suspicion. But I am the greatest, able to do least, yet most suspected as the time and place doth make against me of this direful murther. And here I stand, both to impeach and purge, myself condemned, and myself excused. Then say at once what thou dost know in this. I will be brief, for my short date of breath is not so long as is a tedious tale. Romeo, there dead, was husband to that Juliet. And she there dead, that's Romeo's faithful wife. I married them, and if aught in this miscarried by my fault, let my own life be sacrificed unto the rigor of severest law. We have known thee for a holy man. Where is Romeo's man? What can he say to this? I brought my master news of Juliet's death, and then in post he came from Mantua to this same place, to this same monument. This letter he early bid me give his father, and threatened me with death going in the vault if I departed not and left him there. Give me the letter. I will look on it. Where is the county's page that raised the watch? Sirrah, what made your master in this place? I bid you stand aloof, and so I did. Anon comes home with light to help the tomb. And by and by my master drew on him. Then I ran away to call the watch. This 
letter doth make good the friar's words. Where be these enemies? Capulet, Montague, see what a scourge is laid upon your hate, that heaven finds means to kill your joy with love. And I, for winking at your discords, too have lost a brace of kinsmen. All are punished. Oh, brother Montague, give me thy hand. This is my daughter's jointship, but no more can I demand. A glooming peace this morning with it brings. The sun for sorrow will not shew his head. Go hence, to have more talk of these sad things. For some shall be pardoned and some punished. For never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet in her Romeo. <laughs>